If you can eat your way into a thyroid problem, can you eat your way out? Well, I won't say it's always possible, but there are definitely situations where it can happen. My wife is a perfect example of this. She was able to adjust and tweak her diet to the point that she was able to come off of her thyroid medication for good. And today I'm going to share with you what she eats on an average day to give you an idea of how she did it. Since not everyone is familiar with her situation, let me give you a little bit of backstory. The type of thyroid condition that she suffered from was not typical. Her thyroid dysfunction stemmed from an eating disorder that she had during her teenage years. As a result, she suffered from metabolic damage, low T3 with thyroid resistance, persistent depression, and difficulty losing weight. Her standard lab test looked fairly normal with the exception of a slightly high TSH and a slightly low T3. But other than this, she was always told that her hormones were completely normal. It wasn't until I started to focus on treating the thyroid that I realized something was off and I changed up her treatment regimen. The primary medication that we used was liothyronine, which is a pure form of T3 thyroid hormone. And it worked out great for her. This treatment dramatically improved her mood, allowed her to lose weight, and slowly healed her metabolism over the course of several years. During this time, her dose ranged anywhere from 25 to about 50 micrograms, of which she would adjust on an as-needed basis. She was on this therapy for about four years, but never really liked the idea of being reliant on thyroid medication forever, like probably many of you listening to this right now. As a result, she took it upon herself to try and wean herself off of her thyroid medication for good. To do this, she enlisted my help. And I knew it would be a little bit difficult because some thyroid medications, T3 in particular, provide a huge boost to the metabolism. And when you start to wean off of these medications, there is a small chance that you are going to experience some weight gain. This was obviously a big deal for my wife, as it is for many of you, so I knew that she would have to be very strict with her diet if she wanted to come off her thyroid medication and not gain any weight in the process. Fast forward several months and she is now completely off of her thyroid medication. She has a stable weight. She did not experience any additional weight gain when she got off and she still has control over her symptoms like depression. The only minor residual symptom that she still experiences right now is a little bit of mild swelling in her legs, but she would much rather deal with this swelling than continue to take her thyroid medication forever. Through a lot of trial and error, she was able to figure out exactly what her body responded to in regards to her diet. And that's what I wanna share with you right now. But before I do, here are a few disclaimers. The type of diet that she used to get off of her thyroid medication is not generally the diet that I recommend to most thyroid patients. In fact, if you wanna see that diet, I'll provide a link below. I call it the perfect thyroid diet. But even though that's the case, it's still important for me to share other types of diets that can potentially work. Feeling better is more about finding the diet that works for you and sticking with it. The diet that I'm about to share is what worked for her and may not work for you. And I'm certainly not suggesting that this is the best diet for thyroid patients. In fact, if it were up to me, and I've made this recommendation several times, I would have tweaked it a little bit. And finally, the last disclaimer is that this represents her ideal diet. She wanted me to make sure that I tell you that even though this is what she eats most of the time, she doesn't follow this 100% of the time. Factors like her cycle and her mood all dictate what type of food she eats on a day-to-day -day basis. With that out of the way, let's talk about some of the guidelines that she uses when it comes to picking the types of foods that she wants to eat. She focuses on eating a vegan-based whole food diet about 80% of the time, and the other 20% of the time is complemented with lean meats and other sources of protein. One of the primary metrics that she uses to determine whether or not something agrees with her is whether or not it causes bloating. If a food or food group interferes with her digestion, then she knows that that's not something that works well for her body. One way to know if she's become too loose with her diet is the return of certain symptoms, especially depression. If she starts to feel her depression creep back in, then she knows that she needs to tighten up her diet and eat cleaner. Aside from Kamut-based bread, she is gluten-free. She doesn't track macros or calories, and she tries to avoid all artificial sweeteners. For natural sweeteners, her preferences are on stevia and erythritol. All right, so let's talk about what she eats for breakfast. Pretty much no matter what, she starts every day with a green smoothie. She does this because when her first meal of the day is super healthy, it's easier for her to continue to eat healthy throughout the rest of the day. There are a bunch of different variations to the smoothies that she makes, but here is one of her favorites. The ingredients are six stalks of celery, five leaves of kale, the juice of two lemons, one cup of water, and two to three frozen bananas. The goal with this meal is to eat as many servings of greens as possible, but she's also not afraid to sweeten this meal with frozen fruit as needed. She has found that her body responds very well to both celery and kale, which is why just about every type of smoothie that she makes contains these two ingredients. Lemon juice is included because of its benefits on digestion, bananas provide the sweetness, and water is used instead of juice to limit unneeded calories. Having said that, occasionally she will use coconut water for the base of her smoothies instead of water. If you are thinking about adding a green smoothie to your morning routine, definitely consider adding protein powder to it. I find that many thyroid patients are not getting enough of this important macromolecule, and this problem can be easily fixed by adding one to two scoops of extra protein powder in various meals throughout the day. 
More protein means more muscle mass, which means better thyroid function and better weight control. Here's what she has for lunch. Much like breakfast, her lunch is another vegan whole food based meal. Her morning smoothie is about as getting as many greens in as possible, and her lunch is about getting in as many fruits as possible. She does this so she can satisfy her sweet tooth. Her lunch meals vary from day to day, but her go-tos include chia bowls and overnight oats recipes. Both chia bowls and overnight oats can be easily made vegan. They're loaded with a bunch of whole foods. They're designed to have tons of fiber in them to improve digestion and taste great pretty much no matter what you put into them. Here's one of her favorite overnight oat recipes. One half cup of oats, two tablespoons of fresh ground flax, one cup of water, one apple that's grated, one cup of blueberries, one cup of grapes or other berries, four dates, and two tablespoons of raisins. And here is one of her favorite chia bowl recipes. One cup of papaya, one cup of raspberries, one quarter cup of chia seeds, one eighth a cup of cashews, one banana, two dates, one half cup of water, one teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon, and one half teaspoon of vanilla powder extract. And by the way, I will include the recipes in the description below if you wanna check them out there. For these meals, the chia and the flax provide plant-based protein as well as healthy fats. The fruits are added to provide polyphenols and tons of fiber. Oats give long-lasting energy in the form of slowly digested carbohydrates. And papaya is there for better skin health and better gut health. Here's what she has for dinner. While both breakfast and dinner tend to be more on the vegan side of things, dinner is the meal that she uses to load up with protein. This meal almost always includes some form of animal protein as well as some sort of starchy carbohydrate. She likes to have her biggest and most filling meal towards the end of the day because she always ends up with food cravings late in the evening. Again, there are a lot of different variations that she'll have for dinner, but here's one of her favorites that she'll have at least a couple times per week. It's called ground turkey sweet potato hash, and it's also one of my favorites, actually. The ingredients include sweet potato, corn, black beans, avocado, and ground turkey. She created her own recipe for this, but she used the link in the description as inspiration for the one that she created. So you can find that recipe in the description below as well. In addition to all of these meals, she also has snacks several times per day. Here are some of her go-to snacks. A handful of dates, either plain or with nut butter, fresh fruit of any kind, hard-boiled eggs, usually one to three, depending on her appetite, water with electrolytes, protein powder with water, kamut toast with eggs, seed bread, raw vegan treats, and popcorn with olive oil or coconut oil. And by the way, many of the vegan recipes that she uses as snacks can also be found in the description below. Before you leave, there are a few things that I want you to think about as you think about your diet and your thyroid. Depending on where you are at in your journey, you may look at this information and get overwhelmed. Don't. Figuring out what types of food work best for your body is probably not as difficult as you might think. Will it take a lot of time and work? Yes, but as long as you are willing to pay attention to how you feel as you introduce new foods into your diet, you will get there. You also have to remember that despite what the world would have you think, there's no such thing as a perfect diet for people who have thyroid problems. As far as my wife's diet goes, I think she could actually make a few tweaks to make it even better. But here's the thing, it works for her, so I can't really complain about it too much. My biggest gripe is that she doesn't get in enough protein, but she's able to stay lean and she's happy with her body composition and her physique. The other thing that you may notice is that she eats a lot of carbohydrates and sugars. I do believe that many people, especially thyroid patients, are under eating on this important macromolecule. With the popularity of the keto and carnivore diets, carbohydrates, including fruits, have been demonized. But there's no question that healthy carbohydrates from fruits, vegetables, and other whole foods are needed for hormone balance and optimal thyroid function. I would also go as far as to say that they are important for women who are trying to heal a damaged metabolism like my wife. If you like the idea of trying to repair or fix your thyroid with the use of food, then I'd recommend checking out this video next. In it, you'll find a list of diets that other thyroid patients have used to improve their thyroid function.